Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about Java 17. Ta -da! Yes, it's here. We are in the final ramp down stage and this ramp down phase started the 10th of June and they forked off from the main line so no new code will be added to this version, only bug fixes and so on. And it will be released in the 14th of September for general av availability. So if we jump over to my screen here, I've called this the clean power version. Because there is a lot of cleanup do done in this version and it also going to be a lot more powerful. It has some really powerful feature in it. So let's look at the first feature then. This is the restore of always strict floating point semantics and it's the JEP 306. And this is something that has been in the engine before, before version uh, 1.2 of Java. There were strict floating point uh, semantics, but there were some problem with performance with the x87 uh, co-processors which I have not even heard of about but as we are using the x86 now and we also using the streaming simmed extension to SSE2 uh, which were shipped with the Pentium 4 in 2001 we don't really have a performance issue anymore and having always strict floating point semantics means that we also will have a more deterministic floating point uh, algebra going forward so that we will not have these weird issues where you divide one by one and get something else than one for instance or something like that you had some issues with that in the uh, first uh, processes of the pentium but as this has been solved we have gone back to using the strict floating point semantics uh, next up we have JEP356 and this is enhanced pseudo-random number generators. And it's not really that you get any new number generators, it's not really that we will see anything on the API for the pseudo-number generators. It's just that they will take the code that were there and implement it in three or four different places and then merge those together and make the API work better with that code. So they will try to fix up the code base. You only have one implementation for these number generators and you can use them as you did before. It's just that the code underneath will be one code base. So that's a really good enhancement, not something that you really will uh, uh, notice when you are using it. Next up, we have a new Mac OS rendering pipeline. And this is because before you had a 2D implementation to render 2D images in the OpenGL API for Apple. But as Apple going forward, they have created this Metal. And Metal is an API against their hardware that is much faster and more performant. So that Java has this pipeline so you can actually make 2D renderings in Metal instead is a really good feature going forward. Next up, we have the Mac OS Arch uh, 64 port. I believe that is the M uh, series of Apple processors that they fully support now. If you install Java on an M series Mac, it will just work and you will not have any performance penalties by running it through Rosetta or anything like that. So this is a really good thing to have in the main kernel. Next up, we have the Applet API, and this has been removed in so many iterations. It has been removed from all web browsers. You have to turn it on if you need to use it in some web browsers. Some does not even allow it. So it's really good that we actually remove this totally now. Uh, it was something that you could create Java code that ran in your browser, pretty much like a web assembly, uh, but uh, it was so buggy and had so many security issues that removing it now is really good because nobody probably is using it. Next up, we have strongly encapsulate JDK internals, the JEP 403, 
and these are the some unsafe and those kind of methods. It, they have been deprecated, or not deprecated, but they have been hidden and you needed to have a flag in order to use them if you had some program that required their use. But now they have uh, had that since Java uh, JDK 9, there they hid them and uh, you could use them with a flag as I said, but now you can't use them. They are only internal and you should not use them anymore and you can't use them anymore. Next up, we have pattern matching with switch statements, and this is another preview, and it's more good features for switch statements. And I have some example here that will describe this. So here you say a really impressive switch statement where you just give it an object, and you can case it on null. You can case it on string, and if it gets a string, you can use that string directly by just um, adding S after the string and it, you will get a parameter that you can use inside of this loop. If you have a color for instance you can use that and get the values or the length of it. You can get the pointer reference or an array. So these are really powerful ways of working with different types and you don't really need to do an instance of. We have already gotten the feature that you can do an instance of with a variable and then inside of that if statement you can use that instance. But now we have it in a switch statement also, which is awesome for code completeness and also that we can write more expressive code. Uh, next up we have this RMI activations and that is the remote uh, interface that you can program against the remote message interface so you can actually run code remotely and there were so few people that used this and it was a hard thing to maintain so they deprecated it in I believe JDK um, 12 or 13 I've, I have talked about it before but now they will remove it so they deprecated before now it will be removed from the code. Next up we have the sealed classes these are now in the main release. They are not any preview anymore. So if you, for instance, have an academic work and you see that I have created a shape here and the shape can only be four different things. So we, we know that can't be any other shapes. These four are the shapes that I will have and my code is dependent on only these four shapes be, being there, then you can be the guy that tells the world that you may not invent another shape in my library or use my library with another shape so you can define what a range of clauses may be extended here. So that's sealed clauses. Next up we have the uh, JEP 410 and this is removal of the AOT and JIT compiler, these experimental tools and I'm a little bit sad about this because I was uh, really hyped to use them. I thought that they could be a really good performance benefit, but there were so few people that actually used these and the background, the interface and uh, the API is used by Graal. So the Graal compiler is already using these and many people are using Graal. So they perhaps wanted to remove these as they are a lot of burden to maintain and perhaps they say that you should use the Graal compiler or if you want you can use the API to write your own tooling and maintain that. But they have not been a part, will not be a part of the release of the JDK going forward. But you will have the API still, they will not remove the uh, compiler API. Next up we have JEP 411. And this is the secure ma security manager that they will deprecate for removal and then remove later on. As I have uh, understood it, I've read about it and I'm not really 100% sure about it. As I understood it, this was something that handled the security model for downloaded code and running it in a sandbox. And it was mostly used for the applet API, which we have now removed in this Java release. 
So I guess that there were not many other implementations or uses of this security manager, so it will be removed in future versions of the JDK. Next up we have JEP uh, 4.12, which is the foreign function and memory API. Before I believe it was just called the foreign memory API, now they have added function. And this is a new way to write JNI code, which should be easier and safer and so on. So they are really trying to create some APIs you can run, for instance, Rust code or C code or anything like that, but not have this brittle process that you had with JNI code that sometimes you did not end up with something that even ran if you compiled a, a new code for the library and then the, your Java code did not work with that library anymore. So now they will try to create something that is more stable. Next up we have the Vector API and this is the second incubator of this. So we are closing on a real implementation that could be used in production. And this JEP is actually really fascinating because this is a way to run vectors on GPUs for instance or running it really efficiently on the CPU. And this might be something used for machine learning going forward. So perhaps we will get implementations of TensorFlow and so on in Java or APIs for TensorFlow in Java instead of Python going forward. So that's a really fascinating um, uh, implementation here. Or perhaps it will be used for something in gaming or something like that. But it's a really nice thing to have in the JDK. Next up, we have context-specific deceleration uh, filters, JEP 415, and this was something that I needed to wrap my head around. I didn't really understand it at the beginning, but there is some code here that might explain it a little bit. So when you have a class or an object and you serialize that to a file in some way, so you have some serialization method, then when you deserialize that clause, you want it to be safe. You want to get the right code and not something unsafe that someone else had have uh, created. And here you can have a filter on reading that implementation from disk that you can see that it is the right, uh, in this case, just the right class name. And if not, you will get the uh, status rejected and it will not be loaded or status undecided, then it might be loaded, I guess. And there is uh, also an accepted one that you actually just reload it in. This could be interesting if you, for instance, have a way to make a really good hashing algorithm to uh, look into the file and see that this is the correct implementation that I have serialized to disk. So these were all the features in Java JDK 17 and 17 I believe is also a long-term support version, an LTS support version. So this will be something that you will get patches for uh, going forward. And most, uh, if you are not an Oracle customer, you will only get it for, I believe, two years. And if you're an Oracle customer, they will support it for many years, six or something like seven years or something like that. So this is the version to get if you are an Oracle customer or perhaps if you are using a Red Hat version or using an Adopt JDK version that might maintain it for a longer period, then this is the version that they will maintain going forward, given it security patches and so on. So we will get a new JDK release every six months and every three years we will get a release that will be supported long term. So I hope that you found this video interesting. I hope that you learned something today. Are there any features that you are really excited about? Leave a comment in the comment section down below. I read all comments. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.